Hello and welcome to my uh, first new uh, let's play of uh, the fighting fantasy uh, series of games. This is the basically digital equivalent of the old, at least in the UK, this was a um, series of books in the 80s and 90s where you sort of had a book and you had to throw dice to calculate uh, your stamina, uh, skill and uh, luck, gold pieces as well. Um, it was like a story, like a role playing story where you like sort of chose the story and in this series I will be playing the game but you will be deciding which way the story will, will develop so let's go straight into it let's go into bloodlines uh, not blood bite lines <laughs> blood bones and uh, let's um let's start right away blood bones is a fighting fantasy game book an interactive adventure in which you are the hero you can win only by choosing the correct path Finding equipment, avoiding traps, and surviving combat. Before embarking on your adventure, you must first determine your own strengths and weaknesses with a series of dice rolls. These attributes are recorded on your adventure sheet and include stamina, skill, luck, and your starting gold pieces. For making your rolls, you must uh, choose from one of three difficulty settings. The game, this game book has been designed for optimum challenge on the adventurer difficulty mode. For newcomers to fighting fantasy, we recommend adventurer or free read mode. For experienced readers, Already familiar with printed versions of this game book, we recommend Hardcore Hero Mode. Adventurer. Play Bloodlines by Blood Bones <laughs> as it was intended. Your starting stamina and initial gold pieces are calculated by rolling two six-sided dice plus 12. Both your starting luck and skill scores are calculated by rolling one dice plus six. One, sorry, one six-sided dice plus six. You are also given unlimited bookmarks which act like placing your fingers between the pages. Hardcore Hero. If you have beaten Blood Bones in Adventurer Mode or have read the printed form of this game book before, test your courage in the Port of Crabs with the ultimate challenge. Your starting skill is calculated by rolling one six sided dice plus four thus making you weaker. You also start adventurer, adventure with only 14 gold pieces. You still receive unlimited bookmarks. Play oh, in the free read mode. Play blood, blood bones like an old school cheater. In free read mode you roll your character exactly the same way as you would in adventurer mode but you are given three extra options to help easily 
negotiate your way through the book. Rewind, rechoice, and heal. These are accessed through the adventure sheet. You may use all three of these buttons anytime during your adventure except during combat. Oops. Where you may only use the heal button. The rewind button. You can move backwards to the previous page. Should you take the wrong direction, you can now back up and choose another path. Free choice button. You can unlock all links on any page irrespective of whether they are available. So you can easily negotiate tricky parts of the story even if you do not possess the required conditions or items. Rewind. Navigating the story in this way can sometimes result in odd story outcomes. Heal button. You are able to fully heal yourself at any time, so you will never run out of stamina. Right, we will choose the adventurer difficulty level. So you have chosen the adventurer difficulty level. Before continuing, you must calculate your initial stamina. Your stamina stalk score reflects your general con constitution, your will to survive, your determination, and overall fitness. The higher your stamina score, the longer you'll be able to survive. You must roll two dice and add 12 to the number rolled. This is then entered in the stamina box on your adventure sheet. Stamina will go up and down during your journey, but if your stamina falls to zero, die and your adventure is over. If your stamina is getting low, remember to eat some of your provision. Let's roll the stamina. Right, so 8 plus 12, so it's 20, or base stamina. Next, we'll look at our skill. Your skill reflects your swordsmanship and general fighting experience, or expertise. The higher, the better. Your starting skill is determined by rolling one die and adding six to the number. This is then entered in the skill box on your adventurer sheet. Your adventure sheet can be accessed at any time by using the menu at the bottom of the screen. Right, so let's roll our starting skill. That's not too good. Oh, no, hang on. It's just, oh, it's just one dice, wasn't it? So that's not too bad. Right, let's go for the luck. Your luck score indicates how naturally lucky you are. Luck and magic are facts of life in the fantasy world you are about to explore. Your starting luck is determined by rolling one die and adding six to the number. Uh, this is then entered in the luck box on your adventure sheet. So let's roll our starting luck. Um, that's not very lucky at all. <laughs> well, it could have been worse, but not much worse. <laughs> Next, determine your starting number of gold pieces. The amount of gold pieces in your possession is determined by rolling two dice and adding 12 to the number. This is then entered in the gold piece pieces box on your adventure sheet. Now let's roll our starting gold. That's better. 22, that's nice. That's good. 
Now you must prepare your adventurer's equipment. You bring in your adventure on a sword, backpack, and tinderbox. Gold pieces and a lantern light your way. Rationing your provisions is key to a successful adventure. These may they may be consumed at any time, excluding combat, by accessing the adventure sheet. Each meal restores four stamina. Be sure to pay close, close attention to your stamina and store it regularly. In Bloodbones, you begin your journey with no provisions, regardless of your chosen difficulty. During your quest, you may encounter characters and items that alter your three scores stamina, skill, and luck. Usually, these scores may only ever be restored to their initial amount. On very rare occasions, a particular page may grant an effect that defies this rule. Aside from these occasions, some magic items may also allow you to exceed your initial score. Once you have readied your equipment, there's one more thing you should know. During the adventure, you'll notice that hours will pass at key points, usually when you have been doing something for a considerable length of time. This is very important as will become apparent as your adventure progresses. Try not to allow too many hours to pass. Uh, so it's onward to our adventure. It all started ten years ago when the evil pirate lord Cinnabar murdered your family. At the time, you were only 12 years old and lived with your family in the small fishing village of Clam Beach on the northern coast of Ruddlestone, halfway between the two major ports of the kingdom. Arab, Arab home to all lawful adventurers and sailors, and a sinister what of crabs. Life in Clam Beach was not easy, but it did have a peaceful security about it. And then a terrible day, day came. It was a clear summer day in coming when the huge forbidding black galleon sailed into the bay flying the dreaded flag of the Skull and Crossbone Pirates. The bloodthirsty cutthroats were soon racing up the beach towards the village. The fighting was swift and bloody. Soon, most of the grown folk of Clam Beach had been killed. Your father and two siblings dying with, while trying to defend the village. In the end, the village elders had no choice but to surrender the marauding raiders and open the village meager treasure coffers. The cruel pirate captain came ashore from the ship to collect the booty himself. The sight of him filled you with awe and fear. The pirate was a tall, handsome man with a neatly trimmed, pointed black beard and, uh, and his hair tied back in a ponytail. He was dressed in the clothes of a nobleman with a fine scarlet coat, trimmed with gold braid and wearing a large tricorn hat. At his waist hung a gleaming cutlass and you could not help noticing that on the back of his right hand was tattooed the image of a grinning black girl. When the raiders had finally gone, filled with feelings of hatred for those who had murdered your family, he asked Regai, Regai, the village soothsayer, who the pirate captain That villain was is 
one of the most evil men ever to sail the twelve seas of Titan, was his vehement reply. He is one of the most feared pirate lords of our age, a creature without remorse, a murderer, and a follower of the bloodthirsty voodoo death god Queskari, Queskari, whose mark is a black skull. He is Cinnabar, but because of the terrible atrocities he commits, he is also known as Adbrahim. From that moment on, he vowed that one day he would have your revenge on the evil Cinnabar. Your mother became ill soon after that dreadful day, and three years later, she died. On your 16th birthday, you left Clam Beach and made your way to Harabnab, gaining the position of a cabin boy on a ship travelling the distant continent of Alansia. For the last six years, you have sailed all across the globe, but you never forgot the promise you made yourself a decade ago. Over many voyages, you have tried to learn as much as you can about the rogue captain. You discovered that Cinnabar's galleon, the Virago, is frequently seen sailing in the waters around Dank, uh, sorry, Nankunu Bay and that he, is, he has a hidden base somewhere close to the Port of Crabs. You also gleaned as much information as you could about the notorious city and so when you decided that you were at last ready to confront your enemy and the chance of passage on a merchant ship sailing to the Port of Crabs came up, you leapt at the opportunity. Vengeance, you are sure, will soon be yours. The Port of Crabs is haven to every pirate, buccaneer and freebooter who ply their trade off the coast of the Kingdom of Ruddlestone in the Old World. As you, as, you, as you stand at the prow of the merchantman, looking towards the land, you can make out the ramsackle jumble of buildings of the infamous city and the outlier and the outline of the old fort that stands above it like some ancient crumbling sentinel. The merchantman bumps against the stone jetty and you quickly disembark. Not only is the Port of Crabs one of the most dangerous cities in the old world, but a thick fog is starting to roll in from the sea. It is late afternoon on a chill day in the month of unlocking, and the docks are bustling with activity. Standing close to the quayside is a large old, old stone building which looks like it could withstand a battering from Hydana, god of the deep himself. Hanging over its sturdy oak door is a faded sign declaring that this is the Jolly Roger. This seems as good a place as any to begin your search for Cinnabar, so you enter the inn. The spacious bar inside the Dolly Roger is packed with all manner of scurvy looking sailors and lowlifes. <coughs> the landlord is as big as an ox and has a large anchor tattooed on one arm. No one takes any notice of you as you enter, so you approach the bar and order a tankard of ale 
costing one gold piece. You decide to question the landlord about Cinnabar. First, over your tankard of ale, you talk about the weather and the state of trade, and then draw the innkeeper onto the subject of the pirate you seek. I hear the Virago plies these waters, you say. I'm surprised we weren't attacked ourselves. Not anymore, it doesn't, the landlord replies. Have you not heard? Cinnabar has been dead for the last six months. Cinnabar dead? You have come all this way after years of harboring desire for revenge, only to find that the dread pirate lord has already passed from this world? You ask the landlord how he died. Have you not heard? I would have thought that everyone as far as the Diamond Islands would have heard it by now. It all happened last hiding. You listen attentively as the innkeeper relates the tale. It appears that Cinnabar and his crew were emptying the hold of a galley sailing from Harabnab to Arkleton in distant Annaland, where the renowned bounty hunter Conran Conan, uh, called up them in his ship, the Fortune. Unable to escape, Cinnabar and his men had to defend themselves against the crews of the galley and Conan. Fierce fighting ensured, with Cinnabar eventually falling at Conan's hand. Having suffered an incredible number of wounds, his body being lost to the sea. With the, their leader killed, the surviving members of the, his crew fled aboard the Mirago, returning to the Port of Crabs. Soon after, Cinnabar, second in command, Mirel the Red, set off in the Mirago amid terrible storms. Purposely, perfectly to recover her captain's body. Many now believe that the pirate lord's galleon sank as has not been seen since. The landlord says, concluding his story. You thank him for his help, and in a bewildered daze, you make to leave the inn. You console yourself with the thought that at least the murderer of your family has been at last been brought to justice. As you leave the Dolly Roger, you feel someone pulling on your jerkin. Turning round, you discover that an old drunk, slumped at a table by himself, is the one trying to attract your attention. Just because he's dead, doesn't mean he's at rest, mutters the drunk. Curious about how the drunk's words... I'm oh, sorry, curious about the drunk's words, you sit down opposite the old man and ask him what he means. Let's just say you don't want to go believing everything you hear. But... I know what's going on. Oh yes, old Dreg knows. Tinnabar isn't really dead, see? And he's coming back, the old man says in a harsh whisper. Intrigued, you press Dreg to tell you more, but he suddenly becomes serious and looks around the bar room. Uneasily, not here, Meet me outside in ten minutes. You nod in agreement and leave the lo Jolly Roger. Tendrils of fog are now swirling around the boats in the harbour and oozing along the, the streets of the town. When the ten minutes are up, you quickly return to the old Jolly Roger and 
sneaks down the side alley next to it. In the mist and shadow at the end of the narrow alleyway, you can make out three figures standing over a fourth, cowering on the ground at their feet. Wasting no time, you draw your sword and dash towards them. Hearing you approach, the three pirates turn to face you. The burly characters are ugly, scarred rogues, and the biggest of them, who is easily wielding a heavy wooden club in one hand and holding a bullwhip in the other, looks as if he has some ogre blood in his lineage. At the pirate's feet lies Drag, beaten, bruised, and only just conscious. Here's the snooper, growls the half ogre. You're no match for us. By the time we finish with you, you'll be feeding the shrimps. Or rather, the shrimps will be feeding on you. The other two by her expressed and of course laughed at the companion's, companion's joke. Yeah, you're a fish bait. <laughs> Still laughing, the ruffians advance towards you. Apart from the half-ogre, there is a well-built bearded man, missing most of his teeth, and a leaner rogue with two ugly red stars running down the right hand of his face. You may be about to engage in your first fighting fantasy battle. Would you like to know how more, uh, know more about how combat works? Uh, yes, please. When you begin a battle in Fighting Fantasy Classics, your adventure sheet will appear at the bottom of the screen, displaying your stamina, skill, and luck stats. Above this, the monster encounter sheet will appear, displaying the stamina and skill of your foe. Battles are resolved by rolling two six-sided dice written as 2d6 for both you and your enemy and adding the result of the roll to the respective skill score. This is called the attack strength. Both sets of dice are rolled at the same time. Your dice are white and the, your opponent's dice are red. If your attack strength is higher, you have wounded your foe causing two points of stamina damage. If the enemy's attack strength is higher, it has wounded you, causing two points of stamina damage. If both total, uh, if both attack strength totals are the same, you have avoided each other's blows, resulting in a draw. After hitting your opponent or taking your taking stamina damage, you may use luck to inflict a more serious wound on the creature or to minimize the effect of a wound if received. To do this, select the luck button which will roll two green six-sided dice. If the number rolled is equal or to less than your current luck, you have been lucky. <coughs> if the number rolled is higher than your current luck score, you have been unlucky. If you are attacking and are, you are lucky, you have inflicted a severe wound and the enemy loses an extra two points of stamina. If you are unlucky, the wound was a mere graze and the creature only loses one point of stamina. If you have been wounded and are lucky, you have managed to avoid the full damage of your blow and only lose one point of stamina. Conversely, if you are unlucky, you have taken a more serious blow and lose an extra point of stamina. Your luck score decreases by one point uh, each time you use luck during battle. Sometimes you will have the option to escape combat. If you choose to escape, your foe automatically scores a hit against you, causing two stamina points of damage. 
Research is the price of cowardice. Battles will continue round by round until the stamina score of either you or your foe has been reduced to zero. If you come across more than one creature in an, account, in an encounter, then once the first creature has been defeated, you will automatically begin another battle with the next. Excellent. Let's go back to the situation at hand. So how will you deal with the ruffians stepping menacingly towards you? To charge one of the pirates, turn to 357. <coughs> if you want to stand firm and prepare to fight the rogues, turn to 74. If you want to try and escape by running back along the alleyway, turn to 135. And that is where I am going to be ending this uh, section because now it's over to you to decide. You want to choose B57 or 74 or 135? Comment below. Um, or make a post below in the comments. And the most, um, the one with the most votes will uh, decide the next um, part of the adventure. Uh, I hope you had a nice, um, I hope you enjoyed this really. And um, if you have, uh, please go ahead and uh, like the, you know, press the like button. Thank you. One more thing, here's the adventure sheet for reference, just to um, give us um, some reference on, uh, to help you decide on how you want to go uh, next. <laughs>